Episode 6 of No Extra Words is brought to you in part by The Catapult Podcast. The best in new writing, read by the authors, with a dose of literary commentary that will make you think you're hanging out with an old friend. Find The Catapult on iTunes, Stitcher, or at catapultreads.com. On Off by Taylor Eaton Off, the boy whispered to the star that was peeking through his bedroom window, and it disappeared from the sky. On, and the star came back, glittering in the dark. On, he said again, giggling as a new star came into being next to the first. On, on, on! New stars sprang into existence, shining in crude formations. Go to bed, his mother groaned from the hallway. The boy scrambled into bed, but couldn't find his way to sleep, the starlight too bright. Off, he said. The stars disappeared, and his room went dark. Thank you so much for joining us today on No Extra Words, the Flash Fiction Podcast. This is the hardest commentary I've had to record yet because my big fear is I'm going to be too talkative and overshadow the power of these really short, really delicate, beautiful stories. So I'm going to try to talk as little as possible. Taylor Eaton kicked us off with On Off. Lisa Falls On is coming up with Selkie. You need to know what a Selkie is. It's a mythical creature. Takes the form of a seal takes the seal skin off to come to land as a beautiful woman, puts the seal skin back on to return to the sea. Nancy Stolman's going to close us off with Requiem for Piano, originally published in Literary Orphans Online Literary Journal. Please check the show notes at noextrawords.wordpress.com for all the great information and links so you can find more great work by these ladies, find out everything that they're up to. It's hard to know who invented the term microfiction or what it really means, but there's a story that most people assume is apocryphal that somebody once asked Ernest Hemingway if he could write a short story in six words. If you know anything about Hemingway, his stories are pretty wordy. He comes back with for sale, baby shoes never worn. In an homage to Hemingway, I'm going to close my commentary with my version of a six-word short story. It's a fictionalized six-word memoir by a 16-year-old. And then I'm going to get you back to the work of our contributors, just because I want to really showcase how poignant few words can be. And I'm so grateful to our contributors today. I'm so grateful to you all for listening. I'm so grateful to our sponsor. I could go on and on. Come visit us, noextrawords.wordpress.com, and I hope to see you again soon on No Extra Words. Semicolon. A six-word memoir. Cut. Bled. Felt. Scarred. Scared. Showed. Selkie by Lisa Falzon. I caught the scent of fish and realized she'd managed to find her coat. So imagine my shock when I found her not gone, but sitting in the armchair, staring ahead, stroking the coat in her lap. I just wanted you to know, she whispered, that I would have stayed anyway. Requiem for Piano by Nancy Stolman She'd been slipping away from him slowly, as the things that hurt most do. He woke one morning and nuzzled his arm into the swooping curve of her waist, only to find it cold, with a hardened, glossy varnish that could only mean to keep him out. He tried to fit his body into the new curve, but it was stiff and unforgiving. Her long ballerina arms and legs were next, They, too, hardened and reached for the floor, 
anchoring her growing weight until she became too heavy to move. Her ribs cracked open and widened into a wooden soundboard. The strands of her long, curly hair stiffened and elongated until he could no longer run his fingers through them. Pulled taut, they vibrated and wept if touched, crying the last of the unshed tears that now landed like dampened hammers on strings. It was happening, but he couldn't stop it, could only awaken each morning to what remained of his beloved, and take frightened inventory, her toes reduced to golden petals, her polished satin black skin, her long spine a lacquered lid that reflected his bewilderment. Her face went last. On that final morning, her smile stretched into eighty-eight white ivories, feathered with the sharps and flats of dark lashes. In the soft morning light, he played a requiem on her still-warm keys, propping the lid to listen to her heart.' 